guys, I'm Katie, the uh, education director here at Carolina Tiger Rescue. Almost forgot my line there. Um, and Marissa, our volunteer coordinator, is behind the camera this morning. Good morning. And uh, before we get started with our Wildcat Wednesday, I want to, um, on behalf of Carolina Tiger Rescue, say a massive thank you. Yesterday was a huge success for Giving Tuesday. Um, we raised uh, about $41,000, um, that's with the match included, which is going to go a long way in helping us through this uh, COVID crisis. And we cannot thank you enough. These guys are also super thankful. They just don't know anything different, which is what is important to us, that they have not had anything in their lives change. Um, except perhaps the number of people coming to visit. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We um, have something in the works to say a big thank you next week as well, but I just wanted to give you an update. It was a roaring, pun intended, success. Um, and we are just, uh, just beyond belief at this moment and speechless as to um, uh, how generous everybody has been. So thank you so much. You guys are the best. Um, so today is Wednesday, which means it's Wildcat Wednesday here at Carolina Tiger Rescue, and we're going to meet um, two of and our only caracals. We have 10 uh, species of animals here at the rescue. Eight of them are cats, and here is one of our species. This is Kitwana and Zari. Kitwana is the larger of the two. Zari, of course, is the smaller of the two. These guys are native to Africa in a little portion of the Middle East as well. Um, what's super cool about these guys is of course their ears. So uh, first of all, caracal comes from a Turkish word meaning black ears. So Marissa, I know that they're grabby, so she won't get too close, but I'm hoping you can get a glimpse of those ears. And they're not gonna stand still, guys. Oh, not... oh, 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 we held for a little bit. <laughs> so one thing I wanna point out, or two things I wanna point out, Kitwana right now is rubbing his face up against the fence. You've probably seen a few of our cats do that as we've done these lives over the last couple of weeks. Cats have scent glands in their cheeks, so what he's doing is he's rubbing his face and leaving his scent behind, which is a reminder to us that this is his enclosure. It's also a reminder to Zari. But of course, Zari comes right behind him and rubs her face against it as well. It's just a give and take here. Um, uh, and then the other thing is they're super excited we're here. They may have seen that I had a treat stick and a little bowl of treats that we'll give them just a minute. So they're going back and forth is an excited Tory pacing of, oh my gosh, I can't wait, I can't wait, I can't wait, I can't wait. I'm so excited, I'm so excited, I'm so excited. Um, before we walked up and they noticed that we had treat sticks, they were laying down and just checking out the scenery. So this is an excited Tory uh, behavior that they're doing right now. So. Again, caracal comes from the Turkish word uh, meaning black eared. But also, you may notice they've got tufts on the ends of their ears and always looks like they're wearing party hats. They have the coolest ears, in my opinion, of all the cats. I think that they would also agree. Um, and we often get the question of why do they have the tufts on top of their ears? We have asked them repeatedly as to why they have those awesome ears and they just won't tell us. Good news is there's a couple of, don't worry, the vultures are here as well. So far it's just one, but <laughs> give it time. Give it there. time. So if I dart over here, it's just to save the treats for the caracal. Um, which he's going right for. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and grab that bowl of treats, guys. I'm going to hang on to that, Katie, until you need it. <laughs> just so we don't feed the vultures, we feed the caracals this yes, morning. Exactly. So. Um, scientists don't actually know why the caracals have the hair on top of their ears, but they have a couple of hypotheses. Of course, scientists don't make guesses, they make hypotheses based on research. So one of the um, ideas is these guys are excellent bird catchers. So they can jump uh, 12 feet up in the air to catch birds. One of their favorite birds to catch is actually guinea fowl. Guinea fowl is a ground dwelling bird and what they'll do is they'll get as close as they can. Ideally, not spooking the bird until they grab them, but occasionally they'll spook that bird. The bird doesn't fly. It's kind of like a chicken. It goes straight up in the air. They're able to reach up or uh, jump up and catch it. However, these guys are not just great catchers of ground dwelling birds. They are great catchers of flying birds. And so what they will do is if a bird is flying by, 
they're able to uh, jump up and catch it mid-air and grab it or knock it out of the air. So the idea behind those ears and those hair on top of their ears is they'll sit in the tall grasses of the savanna in their native habitat over in uh, Africa and the Middle East. I got gotcha. you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and what they'll do is they'll flick the tops of their ears. Birds think that they're insects. They fly down closer, making them easier to catch. As we talked about with ocelots on Monday, and as we talk about with a lot of our guys, it is going to be a whole lot easier if that food comes to them versus them having to go get that food. So if that bird comes down a little closer, they are much easier to catch. The more likely reason and the reason that I like as to why they have those ears, if you take a look at Kibana and Zari right now, I notice and can tell their ears are up, which is giving me an indication. They're totally fine with the way everything is. Ears up, everything's okay. Ears back means there's something wrong. So, if one of them was to get angry with the other, or maybe you've seen it in your house cat when they get scared. It works with dogs too, except for the dogs that have floppy ears like basset hounds because ears are always down. But uh, as long as everything's okay, their ears are up and alert. If they are scared or aggressive towards another um, animal, or in my house, it's a vacuum cleaner, they're going to pin those ears down and start to hiss. It's an indication to anything else that I'm not okay with the way things are going. So the way this works in the wild is if Zari was out in the wild and she had kittens, every so often she would take those kittens and make a new den for them so that other bigger predators couldn't take her kittens. But also, at some point, she's going to take them out and teach them how to hunt. Baby caracals are going to follow mama. As long as she can, they can see the hair on top of her ears, like you would be able to see now if you were following her, they know everything's fine. Ears up, everything's A-OK. -okay. She comes across something aggressive or something she needs to be aggressive towards, she's going to pin those ears down. Babies can't see the hair anymore. That's an indication to them they need to go hide. So it's kind of a warning signal for them. I think that's pretty awesome. Um, all spotted cats, wild cats, servals, um, bobcats, ocelots, leopards, jaguars, tigers, even though tigers don't appear spotted, their spots are just stretched out, have the white spots on the backs of their ears, which is an indication that that's more likely as to why the reason they have those spots is a communication device with uh, babies to say, hey, everything's okay, I can see those spots, or uh -uh, I can't see those spots, need to go hide. All right. We're not going to make them wait any longer. These guys are food aggressive. And so we do not want to stress them out this morning. I'm going to shift them apart and give them a couple treats. They have chicken this morning. It is boneless chicken. I just cut up a piece of um, or a chicken thigh for them. I am hopefully going to get them shifted apart. I have a good idea Zari's going to follow me. So there's a little tunnel in the back. It's kind of hard to see, but there is a tunnel that connects the two shifts. Oh, sorry. So we'll see if Zari runs over. Oh. You got Kit. Zari's going to prove me wrong. That's surprising. It is surprising. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and lift lower those shift gate in hopes of Kiwana staying on this side. Excellent. That means that I can safely give treats. They're not going to be able to fight over them. I'll come over, I'll start over here. Okay. He moves, so he gets first. Come on, Kit. Again, I have a wooden stick. I'm not gonna put my fingers anywhere near these. Guys, one thing to note is in Africa, these guys are known as little lions because of how feisty their attitudes are. They're being quite subdued this morning. They are, of course, excited about their treats. <laughs> they were a little anxious. We got a little paw action there from, from, from Kit. Here. They do have their claws. So, Kiwana and Zari were... <laughs> also why I'm back here. <laughs> Kiwana and Zari were rescued from a roadside zoo in Colorado. They were part of our biggest rescue to date. We rescued 16 animals from a roadside zoo uh, out in Colorado in 2016. Um, I like to remember it of 16 animals in 2016. It works out great. Um, 
the shorts I do had been breeding tigers for cup petting uh, um, ventures, allow, taking those babies from their mothers as soon as they were born um, and allowing people to take pictures with them. Uh, that's also where our uh, trio of tigers, Capriccio, India, and Carolina came from. Saber and, um, well, Shenandoah has passed away, but Saber, our white tiger is from there. Mila and Riley are uh, two orange tigers that we've met previously are from there as well. Um, these guys, we don't know if they're brother or sister. We just assume that they're not until, uh, unless we get information that says that they are. He is neutered, however, so they do not, uh, cannot breed um, because we are a federally accredited and GFAS or Global Federation of Animal Sanctuary accredited sanctuary that says that we do not do any breeding. What do you think, Kit? That's all you get. I gotta save the rest for Zari. <laughs> He said, no, thank you. So speaking of breeding the cats, Katie, we had a few questions about um, their kittens and things like that <laughs> and their size. Yes. So are yes. they... We, I studied up on that before we <laughs> Are they big cats or... Well, there's, it's, it's like a three-part. All right. Are they big cats or small cats? Are the kittens born blind, like with tigers? Uh -huh. And are how big are they, like, compared to, like, a bobcat, who someone might be more familiar with? So, like... Sure. How big are they? I hope you're going to remember those questions because I'm yep. going to probably forget on the way. To totally got it. So as far as big cats or small cats, they are small cats. Um, they purr versus roaring. That is how uh, we determine whether they're big cats or small cats. Hey, Zari. Zari's on the stick, kid. There you go. Um, so they are small cats. Uh, they weigh their... They're comparable in size to bobcats. Um, they can weigh anywhere between 16 to 40 pounds. Zari, uh, when we weighed her last, was about 18 pounds. And Kitwana was between 25 and 30 pounds, probably about 28 pounds. Um, last one, savor it. You gotta take the last step, huh? You wanna work it out? Come over here. She didn't think this through very well. Right. <laughs> what do you smell? That piece of grass is apparently very interesting. Yeah, I guess so. Um, so, 20, uh, sorry, around 20 to 40 pounds typically. There you go, sorry. Um, that's a, also a reason as to why we uh, try really hard to make sure they're not putting their paws through the fence. It can get their claws uh, stuck on them. They also can get them off without a problem. Um, but it's behavior that we don't want to encourage, just like four on the floor. Those claws need to stay inside the fence for everybody's safety. So, um, eyes. Eyes. They are born blind. Um, their ears are actually folded down, just like uh, domestic cats are, and also tigers. Um, pretty much all cats are born blind and deaf, um, and I don't know that there's any exception to that. Do you know that, Marissa? Not that I'm aware of. They should be all, um, uh, uh, all the species of cats should be born blind and deaf. Um, these guys are super cute in their ears. Finally, they just one day go pop. Um, so they are born blind and deaf. And then as far as bobcat size, yes, they're a range around the size of bobcats. So between, uh, 18 and 40 pounds typically. Um, so question about, you talked about how amazing these cats, uh, caracals are, oh, that's fair. Um, how amazing caracals are as predators. Yep. Um, but do they ever fall prey? Do they have any predators in the wild? So the thing about predators is there are going to be other predators out there who don't want to have to worry about them fighting for resources. Um, we have seen video, though, of leopards chasing caracals up trees um, and catching them. I don't know, um, I'm going to be honest and say I don't know how often the other cat species will kill these guys to necessarily eat them. It's more of a, uh, they fall prey to those big cat species in terms of they're going to kill them for making sure they don't take their resources. Um, so that's a great question that I don't have a, a, 
fully educated answer on. So I'm not going to tell you stuff that I don't know. That's Great fair. question. I now have a, a <laughs> test today, which is to find that out. Thank you for stumping me. I appreciate that. Um, so we had another question. I know we were talking about all of the ways that these guys survive in the wild. <laughs> totally relaxed. As totally you can relaxed. See, he knows treats are done. Let's see if I can get a little. No, oh, I figured he'd that? get oh, up. No. Tried you to give you guys. Catch, you can't catch me, uh, <laughs> Um, uh, we talked about how uh, powerful these animals are and how they thrive here at Carolina Tiger. Um, of course, he lays right back down again. Um, should they be pets, Katie? No, <laughs> absolutely not. So, um, again, we're not sure where kittens are. You were before uh, we rescued them from the roadside zoo. They could have spent their whole life there. Uh, several of the other animals that we rescued from there had been privately owned pets at one point. We have no indication that that was them. However, we have had caracals in the past that were privately owned pets, um, and they don't get the name nickname little lion um by any kind of coincidence these guys are dangerous and wild animals they're extremely feisty feisty and aggressive um and can easily uh hurt you and will hurt you which is why we stay so far away from them they are not pets they're predators they should be always um respected in that manner yes they look cute I don't know if you guys could hear that. Cuddly is not a word I would use with a caracal um, because of how aggressive these guys are predators. They are built as predators and their sole goal is to survive. And that is what they are going to do. So no, they are not and should not ever be pets. Perfect. Um, one thing, because it keeps coming up. Yeah. Uh, one of your old students says good morning. Oh, good morning. Eric says good morning and that Hi, you Eric. were that you were his favorite teacher. Oh. <laughs> good time to say it. <laughs> um, how old are they, Katie? Twelve. I checked. <laughs> it's like, oh gosh, she stopped me. No, they turned twelve uh, at the end of April. So actually, just uh, last week, they turned twelve. Um, in the wild, the small cats will tend to live ten to twelve years on average. Uh, big cats are eight to ten, so big cats tend to live a little, a few years less. Um, I'm trying to think of. Do we have a 20 year old caracal at one point? 19, 20 mm -hmm. um, is about the oldest that we've had here at the rescue. But they are, again, our only two caracals at this point, and they are 12 years old. As you can tell, though, I just do, um, I know if you get closer, they're going to get up and move. But as you can tell, they know the treats are done. So they are totally laid out and hanging out and understanding. So, again, going back to the pacing they were doing earlier, it's kind of like a, oh, I'm super excited. I know something's coming, I know something's coming, and now they're like, all right, I'm cool. Totally cool. So, it was a new question. Oh! I've not had it, and I'm really excited to share this with you and the world, Kitty. Okay, I'm, now I'm not terrified. <laughs> Do we, we, there is a four and a half year old, I'm sorry, there was no name provided. That's okay. Uh, who wants to know if we have any unicorns. Do we have any unicorns? Yep. This is an important question. We do not have any unicorns that I am aware of, but I feel like that that's just part of their lore is that they, they, that we maybe, maybe don't know that they live here and they do. It's oh true. my gosh, maybe. I don't know. We might have to put out some trap cameras, see if we can't capture a unicorn on, on camera. That would be fun. I think that would be hilarious. That's a great question. <laughs> Um, and an important one. I appreciate you sharing that one with me. It was a very important question. Um, and so uh, there are a couple people asking how we did yesterday. They must, uh, I think they, they missed the first couple minutes, um, but it certainly can't help to uh, talk about how uh, great Giving Tuesday was yesterday. You guys blew us away with Giving Tuesday. I'm going to be honest and say we were a little nervous. Um, we know how difficult this time is for everybody. Not only are our lives disrupted in terms of where we can go and when we can go and what we can do, but also um, it is difficult uh, financially for some people as well. We not only uh, raised the match of $17,000, we exceeded it um, and raised over uh, $22,000. With the match, we raised about 47, no, 41, sorry, 
$41,000 yesterday, um, which just, we're still on cloud nine about that. That's going to go a long way in making sure that Kitwana can bask in the sun and not have to worry about a thing, um, which is our sole goal, that these guys don't know that anything is different, that they are continuing, continuing on to live the best life possible here at the rescue. Um, and you guys have... Again, I, I had said it previously, and so if you if you had heard previously, I am speechless. Uh, we are all speechless and just so thankful that you guys were able to help us out that way. It was incredible, and we were, we're all doing the happy dance around here. Any other questions? Uh, how much do they eat, and are the babies born with ear tufts? They are born with ear tufts, which is super cute. Um, so Kitwana and Zari, I think are at a size small. Hopefully. Let's check. Let's venture together, shall we? Zari's yep. Oh. Yes. So they're on a size small, um, which is about three quarters. Three quarters. I was like, I don't know what three four means. <laughs> <laughs> She's trying to give me signals behind the camera. I'm like, oh. About three quarters of a pound of food. These guys eat um, six days a week, so we have one fasting day, which is on Tuesday. Um, and so be, today being Wednesday, they will eat today, um, which I know that they're going to be ready for that food truck to come around. Uh, Zari is just seeing if she can't torture Kitwana right now, which is, you know, what roommates do at times. So, um, so they eat about three quarters of a pound of food six days a week. That is all fluid. It may we may decide at one point Kitwana got a little on the heavier side and he had to be dropped down with the amount of food that he could eat. He also um, decided that he or they the keepers and the and our vet decided he needed to do a little exercise before he could grab his food. So um, when they are shifted apart, the keepers had him walk around um, and then would give him his food and he slimmed down. So that can change. They can get down to about half a pound of food as well. Um, if he needs to drop a little weight or any needs to drop a little weight, we'll, we'll knock that down just a little bit. Um, or as they get older, they might get to eat more um, uh, to continue to put weight on uh, as, they, as they age. So it's a long answer to your very easy question. Sorry. Um, we wanna thank you guys for tuning in this morning. Uh, and again, we are so thankful and so appreciative of how you helped us out yesterday. Um, Again, we are speechless. We're going to have an extra special thank you next week in terms of um, some enrichment going out to say a big fat thank you to you guys for, for, for not only meeting but exceeding our expectations. And, and we, we just, again, I'm, I'm speechless here as to how thankful we are um, for your help yesterday. Um, Friday, we're going feeding. I think you're going to see a new face on Friday of the human variety, uh, who we're super excited to introduce you to. Um, and we want to thank you guys for tuning in. If you're in North Carolina, it's a gorgeous day out today. I hope you get outside and enjoy it. If you're not, we appreciate you tuning in from wherever you are. And we hope you stay safe and stay healthy. And we hope to be able to see you guys soon. We miss you guys. And have a wonderful rest of your day. And we'll see you Friday. Bye, guys.